Joining me now is Stella Creasy, the Labour MP for Walthamstow. Hello, Stella. Uh, lovely to see you. Hey, um, Gloria. <laughs> and, hear, and hear your little one. Can I start by asking <laughs> what you think about the process this afternoon? Because when I, when I read it, I thought, gosh, that sounds a bit brutal. Two, two um, MPs sort of pitted against each other. Um, I, I, do you feel OK about it? Uh, no, and in fact, that's not what's going to happen this afternoon. I'm actually giving evidence on Wednesday. Look, I'm very clear there's way too much mum shaming in society anyway, and women being told that they can't do right whatever they choose to do. I'm not going to criticise another MP for how they choose to do this process, so they're taking us separately. What I am also going to say, Gloria, is this is the wrong inquiry to be having, because parliaments across the world have different schemes for letting babies in, whether it's in New Zealand, in Finland, in Iceland, in Spain, Canada, whatever. The question is, why don't we have proper maternity and paternity policies so that people who have families can be confident that they can combine being a really good active MP with being a really good active parent? That's not the question we're being asked. And that's a real frustration to me because it's such a missed opportunity. But nevertheless, the other MP, the Conservative MP, Alicia Kearns, who will be giving evidence, puts it quite simply. The House of Commons chamber is no place for a baby. She says she's always been able to leave the chamber to feed her daughter and does not need to have that live stream to the world. What do you think? Well, and I can hear your colleague thinks it's all about being paid. Look, let me be very clear. I took my baby in because I didn't have any maternity cover and my baby was four months old. I, I'd taken babies in previously, so I wasn't the first person to do it. And it was breastfeeding. The issue here is about being able to feed your baby and anybody who's actually got a small baby will know that it's not really practical the idea of leaving them in different places but as i say this is the wrong question to be having because it's not about whether you can take a baby into the chamber it's about why there isn't proper maternity cover you know if the place that makes the laws on what is family friendly isn't very family, it's family itself you can't really be confident that it's going to fight for the families in our communities and we know that thousands of women around this country are discriminated against when it comes to maternity provision so yes in answer to your colleague I have childcare for my older child, but for my little baby at four months old, it was simpler for me to be able to go in and do the debates and do the work I needed to do whilst holding the baby. Now, that situation only came about because I didn't have someone to cover the work that needs to be done to make sure that my constituents were properly represented. And I just say to your colleague, you know, one of the challenges here is that um, if we're having a job where we're really saying to people, look, disappear for six months, nobody will notice. I don't think my constituents should accept that either. And I don't think that's really going to help us deal with what people feel about politicians is that we're all lazy. So why is it that we ask employers to have proper policies in place to make sure that parents can combine being good parents and looking after, I mean, it's a very small baby, four months old, but we don't do it ourselves. In terms of the decision for how Parliament treats new parents, our parents with young babies, who will actually make the decision and do, we ha do you have a sense of when that decision will be made? No, I don't, Gloria. And one of the challenges in this is everyone's blaming each other, they're blaming the political parties and whether they use the pairing system. As if it's OK for me to say to my constituents, sorry, I couldn't take part in that debate and represent you because I was paired, rather than recognising that we could use electronic voting or proxy voting all things that we used during the pandemic and actually our democracy didn't fall apart it thrived because people were able to combine being covid safe but also with their family commitments and making sure they were representing people but right now there are decisions that need to be made by the house authorities there are decisions that need to be made by the parliamentary authorities and there are decisions that need to be made by political parties nobody's gripping this and i'm very struck that 10 years ago there was an all-party inquiry into this that talked about the need to do something 10 years later we're no further forward I wish I could say to women who are going into politics, this is going to get easier. I can't. That's why we set up the campaign This Mum Votes. That's why we're setting up a fund to support mums of young children to stand for selection, um, because we think that actually it needs some people from the real world to get into this and start saying, why are we saying this status quo is acceptable? You know, why are we saying that basically if you hate your family, go into politics because you're never going to see them?